Toxic people suck, and Scott Pilgrim is full of them. Today I'll be analyzing and ranking all of the important characters to see who the most toxic is. Subscribe and comment below other topics you want me to discuss. Yeah! What is there to say about this fucking 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 bleeping bitch. She's a fucking mean, clean, toxic machine. Like, but at the heart of her outbursts is someone rooted in insecurity. Being rude is her defense mechanism to opening up and being an actual fucking person. I think she's rude and doesn't have a filter in a sort of metaphorical sense. In reality, she gets fucking bleeped the f out, but in her mind, she just bleeps everything she's thinking because she doesn't believe in herself and she doesn't respect herself. Even through all the terrible things she says throughout the series, shitting on Scott at any point that she shows up, she still shows up. She still throws parties for her friends. She still hangs out. She still has a semi-productive relationship with Steven Stills, no matter how toxic and misleading it is because, you know, He's gay and all. I'd say she's, you know, she's toxic, but she's not the worst person by far. Okay, Lucas Lee. This motherfucker is toxic as fuck. Chris Evans brings the douchebag out of this guy more than any other character, I think. First off, he's a skateboarder, okay? The first off, red flag right there. You meet a skater boy, you see him a later boy. You kick him out of there. The skateboarders ride away from all their fucking shitty behavior and all the way down to Hollywood, I guess, where he is a shitty B-tier actor who makes a shit ton of money, which is somewhat of a parody of the actor Jason Lee, who is apparently an asshole in real life. I don't know, he wasn't mean in the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I thought he was pretty cool. Lucas Lee is overcome by his ego. He is deeply flawed by it. He's filled with an undying love of himself, which basically destroys any genuine interaction he has. It was only a matter of time until someone like Scott came around and challenged them to a death race, which literally murdered the motherfucker. Kim Pine. What can you not love about Kim, all right? She's sassy, she's cute, she's stern, she's cute, and most of all, she shits on that one guy that we hate from my last video. Throughout the story, we're presented with Kim through her tough exterior. She flops about presenting herself as a depressed girl with a death wish. But whenever Scott comes to her with a problem, she always lends a shoulder. She always lends an ear to his problems and takes the moral high ground. Tries to ground all of her friends to a point of genuine justice. And even since the beginning of the story, when Scott's presented Scott Pilgrim is dating a teenager, she's instantly against it. She instantly understands that date when you're 23 and you're dating a 17 year old, that is weird. No matter how legal it is in Canada, I understand I'm Canadian. It's still fucking weird, comment section. Even if Kim is blunt and rough with her actions, she's honest. And what she's saying has truth to it. Even in volume five and six, she lends herself as a shoulder to cry on for Ramona and Scott, respectively, to vent all their frustrations out when she is basically self-sacrificing. Kim is one of my favorite characters because of her nuances and her good graces. No matter what grudge she has against Scott, she puts all of her grievances aside and helps him out. Listens and is a genuine good person. That's why she should marry me. Like, hey Kim, hi, I'm Jack. Now we have Envy. We're introduced to Envy in all the iterations of Scott Pilgrim in a devious and mysterious sort of light. We're not supposed to understand what the character is like, and that is on purpose. We're presented her through the lens of Scott, which as we know is unreliable and fucking erratic. We're presented Envy during her relationship with Scott. She was trying to figure herself out like everyone should do in their 20s, but through that she's presented many uncomfortable situations where she she treats people poorly and she's self-centered and selfish, focusing on her talents and ignoring her relationships. But as the story trudges forward, we see her break down her barriers. And once Scott is defeated, she opens up a lot more and realizes the problems with herself and her relationships. Envy still has a level of vulnerability, no matter how deep she goes into her Envy character that she presents. That is only that only comes natural to someone and even if she is toxic using people like julie and distancing herself from scott until they broke up envy still has the potential to become a better person and i think envy is mad toxic but she's still a bad bitch like you can't wear what she's wearing in volume six of the story and not look like griffith from berserk okay this woman is a literal super villain now we're on to 
the titular character, Scott Pilgrim. Like, fuck this dude. This motherfucker is so self-hating and toxic. He made an N-word version of himself instead of going to therapy. Like, how fucking cringe is that? Scott is like the definition of being toxic. But as we know, that's the whole point of the story. He grows to understand the toxic parts of his personality and shows that he has the ability to change through his actions. Even if he hurt a ton of people along the way, he's just a bit of a bad person with some changeable toxic traits. But fuck him, cringe ass bitch. He is mad toxic as fuck. Roxy. You know, I honestly feel bad for Roxy. To be honest, Ramona was so cold to her, even like denouncing their college relationship, saying her lesbian relationship with this girl was just the phase. That's so toxic to say. Like, Ramona is a stone cold bitch and deserves to rot in fucking hell. But nevertheless, Roxy's just got that toxic buildup after her ex dumped her ass and that lack of understanding and reconciliation built up into pure lesbian rage more powerful than most forms of homosexual rage because women are fucking powerful roxy is toxic she's still messed up over her college ex-girlfriend years after they broke up she's gotta let that shit go man you gotta move on she's toxic but not that much, he's kinda cringe, to be honest. But in stark contrast to Roxy, the fucking Kita, 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 Kita Yanagi twins, they're kind of on a next level of toxicity. Even to the point where the film doesn't even do the two justice in just how terrible they are. In the comics, these two twinky Japanese boys torment Scott for literal weeks, sending like an evil robot after him at every single social function he attends. Even going to the lengths of kidnapping my queen, Kim Pine, and forcing Scott to live in mental anguish. They fuck with his mind. The other exes kind of beat up Scott once or twice, maybe like shit talk him a little bit, but these guys take it to another level. They're on that Gideon level of trying to get into someone's head. It, it, it's, it's honestly just childish and manipulative, and it's really toxic, toxic as fuck. Run away from these two motherfuckers. What's not toxic about Gideon? His manipulative, destructive relationship with Ramona, his stranglehold business practices, his literal kidnapping and trapping of his ex-girlfriends in like a Walt Disney cryogenically frozen head-ass shit. He's like Dr. Doofenshmirtz if he fixed his posture. Fucking ex-girlfriend in Ader looking ass. But unlike Doof, this goof actually controls the people he wants to control. With his intellect and talent, he understands how to literally get into people's minds. Literally, but uh, we're not talking about magic bullshit today, okay? Gideon grasps the ways of manipulation unlike any other character. Starting the entire Evil X plot after his girlfriend he didn't even pay attention to left him. Like, how toxic can you be, dude? Like, move on, you fucking incel! Gideon is like the top of the tier. I should, I should honestly make another tier just for Gideon. Like, that, that is how toxic this stupid motherfucker is. Okay, we got Wallace, you know, the best character in the story, the funniest, the most self-aware, and most importantly, gay. gay. Wallace hard carries this series more than any other character. He's constantly funny, and yet has a heart of gold. This great roommate and friend helps Scott in any situation, gives him advice and constant nagging to get his shit together, but doesn't shy away from admitting his pure gay selfishness. Wallace is much like Gideon with his intellect and understanding, but unlike Gideon, he actually helps people while also using it to his advantage, because he's a good person. He's not the best person. Stealing Stacy's boyfriends all the time and all is extremely toxic, but his raw gay energy is just too much to resist. Even as a straight man myself, he'd probably convince me I'm gay and join his revolving orgy of orangutan-like men. He's toxic, but has a good heart beneath all that gay. Even sticking up for Scott in the best part of the movie. Hi, Scott here. Uh, you know what? He just left. Wallace has got his issues for sure, and he's got a fuck ton of faults. But that doesn't stop him from sticking up for his morals. No matter how flexible they really are.
Knives goes through arguably the most change since she's a fucking teenager and that's logically what happens during those years. She goes from an innocent Catholic schoolgirl to a literal monster of emotions, literally attacking a woman for cheating with her white god Scott Pilgrim. But Knives reflects on herself and through her experiences, she realizes she needs more from relationships than she did before and understands herself in the process. Like all teenage girls, this bitch is toxic until they escape high school and think back at how they acted and change it. I hope, like, please, Knives, don't attack any more people. They don't, Ramona doesn't deserve it. Knives, I would put in the potential category. Steven Stills almost seemed like he had everything figured out in the story. As the leader of the band, he plans everything and raises all their spirits. He is the driving force of a lot of the social gatherings that they have. But in reality, he was a gay man unsure of what he was doing with his life. Continuously dating Julie on and off in this revolving cycle of toxicity, which resulted in nothing until he met his boyfriend and realized his orientation. Steven Stills, even though he's a little jokey and you know immature at times he's grounded in responsibility and adopts his maturity enough to embrace them steven stills is a man after that music success surrounded by a bunch of lazy losers trying to flop by like kim steven is a little stern to scott he's a little honest to a fault but he has the foundation of maturity that all these other characters are lacking. Matthew Patel, okay, what can I say about Matthew Patel? He is the first evil ex and is probably the least warranted one. Like him and Ramona dated in elementary school. Like they, they, they kissed once. Bringing his anguish from adolescence to his adult life says to me, I need to refer him to my therapist. Or I could even therapize him myself. As long as he brings those those demon women along with him, it'll be free of charge. Matthew Patel is the fucking pinnacle of toxicity here. Todd. You know, they should have named him Todd Toxic. Todd, much like every other person Ramona dated before Scott, uses people. He manipulates people to his bidding. What a surprise, right? Like Ramona does it and the people she dates are going to do it, right? Like it's, it's, it's a revolving door of toxicity. This dude uses envy for her musical talent and connection. He's a selfish, sexy vegan who uses that as an excuse not to eat you know, fuck this toxic dickhead. He's on the same level as all these other motherfuckers. And we have last but not least, Negative XP's favorite girl, Ramona Flowers. I've already delved into her in my previous video about Scott Pilgrim, but to say this girl isn't toxic is like saying there isn't smog in Los Angeles. You try to ignore it, but once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Ramona is next level on the toxic scale. But as we said with Scott, she realizes her shitty actions and works to better herself. That doesn't make her constant selfishness disappear, however. I'm gonna put her right beside her boyfriend, right beside the N-word. Maybe I'll even put them up here. Maybe, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I'll even put them up here. Maybe, you know what, these two are, yeah, you know, they're the worst. I ignore everything else I said. Game!